we've got a fabulous film for you this month. Most of you will be familiar with the 303 Lee Enfield, a bolt action rifle that served the military forces of the British Empire and Commonwealth between 1895 and 1957. I've got Paul Simons with me here today, former British commando, as well as being an approved verifier for the PDS-1. Paul knows a great deal more about this fabulous old rifle than I do. So today I'm going to be heading out with Paul into the quintessential British countryside to hunt for the equally quintessential and native Roebuck. Before we come on to that, we've got some more great news. It's with enormous pride this month that I can reveal that County Deer Stalking and the Capriotas Club have become key corporate supporters of the Country Food Trust charity. This follows a post on our County Deer Stalking website in which we invited readers to nominate a charity, one that was supportive of conservation, sustainability, and our way of life. Founded in 2015 to feed people in need, in the last year alone, the Country Food Trust has provided over one million game-based meals, one of which is a fabulous venison ragu, to people in food poverty. And this is how we're gonna do it. In our last film, we released details of a recommendation scheme that puts money back in the hands of people like you. We also showed you how through that scheme we would be donating 10 pounds to charity when someone signed up to the Proficient Deer Stalker Certificate Level 1. Well, we're delighted to announce that £10 will be going straight to the Country Food Trust to help people in food poverty. Give it a try. Mention the PDS1 to someone you know, send a quick email to info at County Deer Stalking with their name, and in one swoop, you will have earned £100, introduced someone to deer stalking, and have contributed to a charitable donation to the Country Food Trust. Now back to this beautiful old Lee Enfield and that Roebuck. Paul, great to see you. Thanks Good for joining you. us here today. Thanks for, thanks for having me. Tell me a little bit more about this uh, rather nice looking rifle. Okay, um, short magazine Lee Enfield. Uh, we know a bit of the history of this rifle. Uh, it was used during World War One. went into storage after the war. Uh, it was used in the Western Front from our research. Yeah. Uh, and in 1940, it came out of, uh, out of storage, was yeah. issued, rebarreled. Um, sent to South African troops in the Middle East theatre and after that, a bit hazy, we don't know really what happened to yeah. it after the war, but it, um, it came on the market a while ago and uh, I snaffled it. They're, they're amazing things these old yeah. Lee Enfields, aren't they? I yeah. mean, I was reading up on them and they say that, you know, they survived the Flanders mud, they survived the deserts, yeah. the cold of Norway and all these sort of places, didn't they? And they still work, don't yeah. they? Yeah, this one... Um, we only had it a month, and it's uh, it's already fired a you know a couple of hundred rounds. It does does really well. Yeah. Um, there are they are still in service with some of the developing world armies. Yeah. Uh, uh, today, so you know this one, 110 years old plus yeah. probably. Yeah. Um, yeah, great uh, great rifle. It's an absolute corker, isn't it? And mm. have you had to do a lot of maintenance to get it back up? No, nope, none at all. None okay. at all. I took it to um, uh, an armourer down in Devon. Yeah. Um, he did a strength test on it, reproofed it, made sure it was all good. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's, it's so it's been proofed. Yes. Effectively. Yeah. Yeah. Been proofed. Yeah. And of course, in 303 caliber. Yeah. Not a caliber we see today, is it? No. Very historical. Um, yeah. You know, re replaced by uh, by 308, which yeah. Uh, yeah. controversial, I know. Yeah. Because um, I suppose it yeah. would have been, you know, that that was 303 was the main separate, and then take them by 308 and 306 in, and of course in the states. Yeah. Um, well, 306 is um, what the Americans were using American during equivalent. World, yeah. World War Two. We were yeah. using 303. Yeah. Um, you know, really does pack a punch. The bullets yeah. themselves, that the, um, the, the issued rounds were 167 yeah. grains. Um, and you're a former British commander. I expect you were using this when you were in service. <laughs> uh, no, call. I'm old, but I'm not that old. Um, no, the um, yeah, I, I served with Two Nine Commando Regiment yeah. uh, for yeah. my sins. Did all the, the whole yeah. Middle East and West Africa piece. Yeah, um, yeah, that was that was yeah, but a something, ago. something a little bit more modern than this, I expect. A bit more modern, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. It, it's an absolute beauty. Yeah. I mean, the things that we have to be careful of, of course, we've got a duty of care to the deer, of course and we want to make sure that we can place a well-aimed shot and that we're going to be able to dispatch something humanely. It's all very well to set out, but we've got open sights and we've got a bit of a relic of a rifle. So is it up to the job? Um, yeah, certainly is. I mean, they've obviously got the licensing issues as well. I'm, I'm open on this, this rifle, yeah. so uh, there's, there's no legals uh, in, yeah. involved. Um, I'm doing four inch groups with it at 100 yards. Yeah. So, you know, try and tighten that four, up today. Four inch group at 100 yards. Yeah, open, okay. open sights, yeah. uh, pronoun supported. So we really want to be keeping that range in a little bit. Yeah, I wouldn't really want to go over 100, you know, and row a small deer anyway. Yeah. Um, 
obviously we've got and, and tell me something yeah. Paul do you, do you think you're getting that four inch group at 100 because it's open sights or because of the tolerances of the rifle the rifle itself I'm, I'm you know it's they, they've stood the test of time yeah. they, they really are a good bit of kit yeah. um, it's consistent it's a, it's a very spicy recoil yeah um, very consistent ammunition being yeah. used as well you know, we had to cast our own for today because yeah. uh, it's yeah. difficult to get hold of um, of deer legal 303 yeah so yeah um, we're, we're so we've got some deer legal caliber. Uh, yep. We've got deer legal caliber. Yep. We've got the deer legal ammunition, of course, yep. which is going to need to be expanding, of course. Yeah. And uh, we've got a half decent shot as well, I hope. Just about half. <laughs> <laughs> May I have a look? Yeah, please. Great. Believe it or not, this is the first time I've ever held a uh, Lee Enfield. And uh, what, what strikes me first of all, well, it's got a bit of weight to it, hasn't it? Yeah. The bolt is requires a little bit of force, doesn't it? Yeah, a bit of manipulation there. Yeah. And um, I tell you, the other thing that's really interesting is the fact that there's no raised comb here, is there? So when I raise that, I've got to be almost on my chin here yeah. in order to be seeing down the iron sight. Well, one of the things, a lot of the modern rifles um, will uh, adapt the rifle and the position and the stock, etc., to the individual. Okay. We're really going back to the old school here. You had to adapt to the rifle. Yeah. You know, and they made millions of these things. I think 17 million or something Did crazy they, really? they, they made. So you had to learn how yeah. to shoot the rifle. And in, in those days, it wasn't the rifle's problem, it was your problem. I mean, it's sort yeah. of like the old military equivalent of a today's Kalashnikov, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, they were making mass-produced weapons, yeah. weren't they, like this? Well, they, they made them in Canada, they made them under licence in Australia, uh, and they were made at Birmingham. Um, yeah. Birmingham Small Arms produced the, uh, the British ones, and, and they were issued throughout the entire yeah. Commonwealth and uh, Imperial forces. You know, the other thing that strikes me is it's such a privilege, isn't it, to yeah. be able to get your hands on a weapon like this. Yeah. You must be chuffed a bit, aren't you? Absolutely, yeah. Got it on your ticket? Yeah, on, on, it's, yeah it's, um, it's my baby. I hope you got it on your ticket. I've definitely, <laughs> definitely on my ticket. <laughs> it's so, an absolute beauty. Lovely. Yeah, tell us a little bit more yeah, about it. Thanks. Um, okay then, uh, number three, Mark One. so uh, World War One. Um, during the war, during the, during the war, during uh, the first war, they removed the windage yeah. um, element. I, think, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, yeah. They removed the windage element because of the ranges were so short between the trenches. So yeah. although it's only a small big piece of metal, uh, it's less engineering, and in the great scheme of things, the millions they're producing, that metal it was yeah, precious. Cost cutting. They also removed the magazine cut off as well. Again, cost cutting um, during the first war. Uh, this one kept it, and they also reviewed. The older variants have um, volley sights on the side. This one doesn't. Vol um, volley sights. Volley sights. So to extend the range past two thousand yards. Okay. So the 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 scope it's the um scope the iron the sight itself starts at two hundred yards. Yeah. Obviously all imperial, not yeah. not metric, and goes all the way up to two thousand. So to aim at two thousand yards, you are having to look at this were. this kind yeah. of angle. Um, and I, it's, I dread to think what the bullet drop would be at 2,000 yards. Yeah. So, um, you know, well, that sort of gives you an indication, doesn't it? The yeah. fact that you're really having to... Yeah, that. well, it was beyond individual effective firing range, so you do it as a company or as a platoon, you know, up to yeah. sort of 30, 100 men, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and historically, one of the uh, reasons um, we did so well in, in World War One was because of this rifle. We could take 10 rounds, whereas the Germans could only take five. Uh -huh. um, we could do uh, 15 rounds a minute as a minimum per yeah. um, per soldier. The Germans yeah. were pushing 10 if they were lucky, uh -huh. um, and also it had to be accurate. An interesting um, fact about uh, about the about the rifle and, and the soldiers: if they couldn't do 15 rounds a minute on target at 200 yards, yeah. they got a reduced rate in pay. It's interesting you say that, Paul, because there's a challenge, isn't there, with this? Yeah, it's uh, it's not so much a challenge. It's more of a, a, a historical. Um, uh, event called the Mad Minute is actually practice number 22. In the, the Mad Minute? The Mad Minute, okay. yeah. Practice number 22 yeah. in the British Army uh, field, um, sorry, shooting test. 15 rounds per minute or as many as you can go. Yeah. Interestingly enough, the world record is 38. 38. So that's more okay. than one round every two seconds, including cocking, including recharging. Yeah. That's um, quite impressive. And, th and this needs to be sort of accurate, well-placed rounds as well, doesn't accurate, it? Accurate, well-placed rounds on a 12-inch square at 200 yards. Okay. So and how many can you do? Uh, I did it without stripper clips. Uh, for the, uh, in the second time, only fired this rifle, uh, I got 15 off in the minute. 15? 15 to the minute, yeah. A bit shy there. I mean, a bit sloppy there, Paul, isn't it? Really? First time I did it, to be, <laughs> to be fair. Um, and I didn't have stripper clips either. I had to manually put them in. <laughs> Fish them out of your pocket. Fish them out of pocket. Lost about 20 seconds doing that. So, um, yeah. <laughs> well, listen, that's going to be really interesting. Yeah. And uh, I think uh, the viewers be rather interested to see that. So let's take a look at Paul in action, trying to uh, rattle off 12 rounds, wasn't it? Yeah, please don't 12 judge rounds me. in a minute, and let's not judge him too harshly. <laughs> Okay, uh, we'll try and get it right this time. Mad minute with uh, short magazine Lee Enfield 303 ammunition. Rifle itself, 100 years old. 
When you're ready, Tommy. Yep. Right. Bit of magazine. Load. Ready. Start in. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Twenty seconds. Thirty five seconds. Got to get fifteen. Twelve seconds left. Five, four, three, two, one, time. Clear. <laughs> Get them all off. Got all fifteen off. Get on. <laughs> okay, fifteen rounds fired. Uh, huge improvement than before. Um, obviously, we've got getting a few ball, bullseyes now. Um, iron sight with what 12 inch in between, between fore and rear. A um, bit more concentration, and I've, uh, I've pretty much hit the paper. Um, not bad for a hundred year old rifle. Incidentally, the, the world record for the mad minute was 36 rounds a minute. Ow. <laughs> I've just managed 15, I've just managed it. So, um, yeah, fair play to the uh, one boys and two boys. Not bad, Paul, not bad. I don't want to embarrass you by having a go myself, mate, but uh, I would love to have a go if that's all right. Yeah, please do. I mean, I'd love to see this old relic in action again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the rifle, yeah, not you. The rifle, of course. Yeah. No, that's so, There we go. I'll um, stick my headgear on and we'll give yeah. it a go. Ear, defend ear defenders are a must. Thanks, Paul. No worries. Okay guys, you'll notice there that I'm still using full metal jacket. That's not to say we will be on the row, of course then we'll be using expanding. The only reason we're using full metal jackets here of course is because uh, the availability of expanding ammunition for 303 is, uh, is a little bit difficult. So we're going to stick on the full metal jackets and uh, with that said, let's see how we get on. Well, Paul, as you say, I'd say it's a little bit spicy. And, <laughs> and at that sort of range, you know, I'm shooting all low there, aren't I? First ever try with a 303, and I'm shooting a group of probably a good four inches, I would have thought. So yep. uh, I'm going to keep this in your hands, I think, today, because <laughs> I think you're going to do a lot better than I am with it. But uh, thanks for yeah. letting me have a go. No, Absolutely great. pleasure. What great fun. do is um I know the ground a bit better than you here yeah. so if you were just following in my tracks yeah yeah no worries and, uh, we'll see how we get on yeah fallow row and mud jack on this ground yeah okay but of course we know you know as well as I do yeah. 
You've only got Roebuck and Susan and Mudjack. Yeah. Okay. okay, are we shooting Mudjack does here or are we leaving yeah. them? We, I prefer the Bucks, okay. ideally. Yeah. Um, you know, the management plan as we've got it at the moment is to take out the smaller, weaker heads on yeah. the Roebuck. Yeah. Okay. And Mudjack Buck. I'm trying to actually bring on the Mudjack on a little bit. Yeah. Because we're not seeing too many in this in this wood. Okay. So we're going to stick on the males for yeah. Mudjack and uh, leave the does. All right. What about uh, the deer weights? Are we seeing a drop off or a, uh, an pretty, increase? Pretty good actually. I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, look at the browns. Yeah. To be honest with you, they're yeah. never short of nutrition. Yeah. And uh, most of the deer around here are are good quality, yeah. healthy, heavy animals. That means that the the management is effective in what we're doing. Well, I do yeah. think so. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> you know, interesting. I've been doing yeah. this ground now for. I suppose over a decade, believe yeah. it or not, and uh, and yeah, we tend to see about the same number of deer, yeah. and they te seem to achieve about the same number of weights, which of course, that's yeah. the epitome of sustainability, isn't it? That's what it's all Absolutely about. Absolutely bang on. Yeah. yeah. Good. Okay. Are we all set and ready? Yeah, ready to rock and roll. Great stuff. So, uh, we'll head off down this way and uh, see yeah. how we go. Okay. Of course, it's all very well using open sights, but uh, first of all, you've got to spot your deer. And uh, I've got today with me a pair of uh, Swarovski EL rangefinders, which is great for two reasons. Firstly, they're about as good as you get in terms of clarity. And secondly, we can range that animal and check that it's a suitable distance before we think about taking a shot. To improve our visibility, Paul and I make our way to a nearby high seat. But before we can get into the high seat, we spot something on the ride. Good shootable animal. He's a good shootable buck. Okay. Still about 60 yards, I think. Tell me how that looks, Paul. We'll have to wait a few minutes for him to present. Yeah, I think what we want to do is just wait a because he's going to come, I think he's going to come down and browse that yeah. hedge line. Hang on a second, hang on mate. There's something coming in from the right. A fallow crossing the sea. Don't believe it. Two species, ten metres apart. <laughs> we'll just wait for him to pass by. Paul places a perfect broadside shot and the deer makes a quick dash into cover. Great shot. Absolutely great shot, Paul. Excellent. It's just disappeared off into the right there, hasn't it? Did you see it? Yeah. I don't know how well you could see down those, but... Uh, and then the dome just 
just rushed in after him. Yeah. But I think probably we'll find that he's uh, just collapsed. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll put a few yards into. I'll put the round in the engine room. So yeah. we'll, um, you know, just give well, us a bit of shoulder area. Because he literally just came broadside, yeah. didn't he? Just yeah. came broadside. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, that was a good solid strike. Yeah. Like it did hear it. Yeah. He won't have gone far. I don't no. think. No. And didn't suffer, which is amazing. Yeah. We'll give it a few minutes and then uh, we'll have a wander down and see how it goes. Well done. It looks promising. Yeah. Great stuff. I'll shake your hand yet, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we give it five or ten minutes and then we follow up. We quickly find a blood trail, but the deer has collapsed not five yards into cover. Didn't get far, did he? Absolutely brilliant shooting. Well done, well done, well done. Just do an eye blink. Oh, Thanks, Peter. Great <laughs> shooting, Paul. <laughs> Absolutely. You, We're a lovely little roebuck there as well. Perfect cull beast. Um, yeah. Exactly what we want to be shooting this kind of yeah. year. Yeah. We've got to get numbers down, and, and we don't want to be shooting the big trophies. We want sustainability so uh, absolutely perfect right. brilliant great shooting and lovely shot place thank well. you very much first thing got to make the, uh, the rifle absolutely. safe absolutely you know this is what it's all about wild sustainable free range and non-intensively farmed food um you know this little roebuck nothing goes to waste and uh, i'm sure paul you'll be taking it away with you okay. clear thank you, you. you yeah take this one away with you yeah it's going to be um barbecue Good. Burgers, sausages, Good. steaks, yeah. um, and that's that's crucial. You know, those who, who are still fortunate enough to manage the deer, utilise them um, because you know the the animals had a great life. Yeah. It, it's it's ending was brilliant, yeah. and some of the finest quality meat that, that the country's got to offer. Yeah. So let's, I, let's I, do it. I absolutely agree with you. And yeah. uh, you know, I've never met a deer manager that doesn't respect the animals that that, that we're shooting. You know, nothing ever goes to waste. And um, you can see from that, it, they, those images there, there's plenty of deer on this ground. We had fallow, we had muntjac, we had roe, all in just in this ride. It was absolutely amazing. Exactly, and, and the point that nothing goes to waste, the antlers will get turned to dog chews, the bones will go to my friend's dogs, uh, the skin will be going to the dogs as well, the offal will feed scavenging wildlife, and, um, and the meat will, uh, will be on the barbie. And, uh, so, what a privilege to be able to use an old Lee Enfield. An absolute classic rifle. Um, yeah, never done this before. I'm absolutely stoked. Um, yeah, uh, won't be the last time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you did well, yeah. actually, because we had, um, you know, you got open sights. I'm not yeah. sure I'd have been confident enough to take a shot at whatever, sort of 60 yards, I think it ended up being, didn't it? Yeah, but, we, uh, we're really going back to basics here. Yeah. Um, and lessons learned from myself, you know, um, the persons, persons in the past who did this with open sights, well, they had some talent. Yeah, yeah, and, and yeah. we use scopes as, as, a, as a basic now, so yeah, um, yeah, yeah really yeah, good. Yeah. Well, listen, well done once again. Thank you, my friend. Great shooting. Cheers. Well done. Thanks Congratulations. Well. Thank you. So that's it for this month. Thanks again to Paul. Great yeah, to see you. Thanks, a lot. thanks for coming along today. If, like Paul, you'd like to become an approved verifier for the PDS-1, you can check out the criteria for becoming an AV and take the course by the UK Shooting and Hunting Academy. We want the PDS1 to become the UK's deer stalking course of choice, so why not get involved and help make a contribution to the Country Food Trust?